Let's now introduce a variant of the Lancaster model. In this variation, we'll continue to look at two armies, but one of the armies will engage in guerrilla tactics, while the other army will engage in conventional warfare. We will name our variables appropriately, and one of our differential equations will be unchanged. How the conventional force changes with time depends on the equippedness and size of the guerrilla force plus a reinforcement term. We are once again neglecting operational loss. How the guerrilla army changes over time, however, will be different. Instead of just having the capital C that you would expect from previous material, we've also got a capital G in there. And then the expected reinforcement term. Why is this? What I'm saying is that the bigger the guerrilla army is, the faster they are killed. Does that make sense? Well, suppose you have a soldier in the conventional army, and we have a forest. And in the forest, there are guerrilla soldiers. And interpret this very literally. This person in the conventional military is firing into the forest, but he can't see the guerrilla soldier, so he's firing at random. If there's only one person in the forest, this guy's unlikely to hit him. If there are a bunch of guerrilla soldiers in the forest, then this soldier's random firing is a lot more likely to kill someone. So the bigger a guerrilla army is, the faster the guerrilla army decreases in size. Because of that, guerrilla armies tend to only have an advantage when they are relatively small compared to the conventional army. And we will discuss that in further detail in later videos.